What's going on you guys? Spencer here. Uh, we're back here in the wrench room. Uh, I'm going to be talking about ball diffs. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how I personally build my ball diffs in my race cars. Uh, this isn't a specific video to the team associated cars. It applies to the low C, Kyosho, Yokomo, uh, and so on. Um, the, this, this is just some generic tips that I've learned along my career. Um, some different greases that I use. Um, you know, the ProTech cage thrust. We're going to be talking about that throughout the video. Um, but I've been asked so many times on these questions, how, how often do I change the diff, uh, how do I build it, uh, what greases do I use, do I use the cage thrust, do I not use the cage thrust. So um, I'm super excited to make this video because I know it's going to help a lot of you guys out that are watching. Uh, but first of all, I really want to appreciate you guys uh, tuning in to all my videos, liking, sharing, and commenting on them. Because without you guys supporting me, I wouldn't have anything to do uh, for making content. So uh, this is uh, this means a lot to me to make these videos for you guys. And I hopefully you guys enjoy the video just as much as I do making it. So let's get right into it. So some of the key features that I use in the diff that I'm going to be talking about before we start building is um, a few things. We'll talk about the greases and the Protec cage thrust. This is something that I've been using for about a year and a half now. Uh, I'll link a part number down below in the description so you guys can check them out online. Uh, but this has really helped with um, the longevity of the diff. It's helped with how smooth the diff um, stays. And um, it's just so easy to build. You don't have to you know, put an individual ball on the, on the, the ring and uh, lose them or anything like that. And the best thing is, is that it's pretty inexpensive, um, especially for how important the diff is in the car. It makes it you know, just more traction. It lasts longer and um, it's easy to build. So definitely check out the cage thrust. Definitely something that I recommend putting in your diffs. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll put a link down below from A Main Hobbies um, on where you can get them. And the next biggest thing is I can't stress to you guys enough how important it is of uh, the greases that you use. Um, as you can see here, these are um, the black grease and the clear grease. These are the RM2 greases that you can get from J Concepts. Um, well, obviously you can see that they're in a syringe. Um, I prefer putting them in a syringe just because it makes it a little bit easier to um, you know, get into the slots and put on the balls a little bit easier and it doesn't, you know, doesn't make your fingers dirty or anything like that. So I got these syringes from Amazon. Um, the, the RM2 grease has definitely been something that we've been using for quite some time now. Um, you know, got the guys back at the shop and really wanting something to um, specifically being used for the, these ball diffs, having some good premium grease is something that's important. So we got it and we've been using it and we've had a lot of success with it. Um, so now that I shared to you how a couple of the, the key items that I use to make sure the diff is built properly, let's start building. So as you can see right here, I have the thrust washers, the cage balls, um, and then the, the next washer as you can see. And this is actually going to be the way I'm going to be putting it on the screw in um, the directions of what uh, I've read and uh, been doing. So the best thing to do is I like to get the screw and then I like to put one washer on as you can see. And then what I'll get, what I'll do is I'll get my syringe and put grease all along the the groove of where the cage would sit. So I like to put a good amount of grease there. And then what I've what I do is I put the the cage part facing up. So I'll give you a better look at that once it's installed, but I'm not really sure if you can see that, but the cage part is up. What I'll do there is I'll kind of set it down with the syringe and I'll pack more grease in the actual cage itself. So definitely don't be afraid to put grease on. And then the next step what I'll do is I'll put the last washer on and I'll flip it upside down and then I'll put more grease on that cage. Just so you get grease everywhere. 
<clears throat> and then I'll put it slowly together. You don't want to go fast. You want to just go nice and slow and then the excess grease you can kind of take off with your hand. <clears throat> So once you get that part built, you can just put that to the side. So as you can see here, I got all the parts laid out, the outdrives, the diff gear, the T-hat stuff, um, the nut, the spring, and the rings, and then of course the bearings. Uh, the biggest thing that I do first is I get some motor spray, and I'll clean all the parts, especially the rings for the diff. And then I'll just wipe the out drive with it as well. And I'll get some residue off. It'll be kind of some yellow stuff, as you can see. And then what I'll do first after that is I'll get the out drive and I'll just put a nice coat along where the ring sits. And I'll take my finger and gently slide across all the way around and um, just make sure that that section of where the ring sits is coated with grease. I'll take my o-ring, or excuse me, my uh, diff ring. I'll put it on top there, make sure it's on there flush. And I'll take the access and then wipe all the way around so it's coated. And then what I'll do is I'll take my syringe and daub more grease on top and I'll put this to a side. So that's pretty much coated with a good amount of uh, clear grease. And I'll do the same process for the other outdrive. <clears throat> put the diff ring on. Then I'll cut it again. You can slide the ring a little bit to make sure it's seated in correctly. I'm going to put my a bearing in here too. Okay. So now I'll take the one that I'll drive with the stem on there. And I'm going to put that straight up and down. And then I'm going to take my diff gear and start putting grease in the holes. And that's what's nice about the syringe, because you can actually seat the, the tip of the syringe in the hole to make sure you're getting it all covered. And once the holes are, are coated with the, the grease, I'll put the diff gear on the bearing and out drive, push it all the way down. And then I'll take my the, the diff balls that come in, in the, the diff rebuild kit or in the kit itself and um, I'll just start placing them in there once those are all in there just start sitting them around and in they're each individual holes and as you're doing this you'll actually get the balls kind of covered all the way around coated with grease, which is good. So, so I got all the balls in there. And then what I'll do is I'll take another coat and just top it off with more grease. And then I'll put that to a side. And what I'll do with the spring is um, I don't compress it at all. With the new spring, it's actually um, a good quality spring, so you don't need to do that. Um, but I will put it on the, the diff gear side, and then I'll put the T-hat nut on behind. And then once you have that built, I'll just put them together. And you can just kind of move it a little bit and just make sure it's completely seated in there. Sometimes you have this stuff pop out, um, but be careful. So you kind of need to hold the nut. Then I'll get my screw. 
make sure that it's in there. And then my 2.0 wrench and start screwing slowly until you start feeling some sort of resistance. And you don't want to screw it in too tight. You want to be able to have this thing pretty... Oops, pretty loose. I'll back it off a little bit. And then I kind of just move it around a little bit to kind of free it up. But you don't want to be able to, to pull this and feel any sort of movement. You want it to feel locked and, um, and feel with a little bit of some tension. So once you got that done, this thing's ready to go. Uh, the last thing uh, that I do is I kind of just get my 2.0 and I take the access grease off. Maybe get the towel and just make sure that it's all clean. <clears throat> so that's pretty much how I build my diffs. Um, there's a couple things that I left out while I was building it. I kind of wanted to wait till the end. Um, as you may have saw that I didn't use the dust cap um, for the thrust side where the screw goes. I actually don't like using this because I noticed when you put it through the outdrive and let it sit against the screw, sometimes it could put some unnecessary pressure on the screw and, will help, and it will change the tension of the diff. And to be honest with you, we don't really run on super loamy, loose dirt tracks and there's no need for a dust cap. But for the guys that race out there in Australia or anything like that, where they do run on some unorthodox um, conditions, I still don't highly recommend using it because I don't believe that the dirt or dust gets into the thrust washers or the grease. Um, and I just think that this is a little bit of a hindering of performance if you definitely put it too close to the, the screw. So I'll put that to a side. And the next thing was the actual diff balls that I use. I don't use the other um, balls that we offer for the vehicle. I prefer the stock ones um, and I've just noticed that it's, it's just so much more of a better um, mesh and material of the actual ball. Um, seats so much better with the actual standard um, diff rings that we offer and, and of course the factory team diff rings. Those are something that I always use and that's what I that's what I use to build these diff is the factory team diff rings. They're a little bit more, um, they're more of a truer flat surface and it just helps with consistency and of course uh, longevity of the diff. Um, other than that, you're pretty much all set um, as far as the building process. The next thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was how often do I change the outdrive. Um, the biggest thing that I, that I like to keep track of is the how is the outdrive wear. If I start to see if some sort of indention um, or um, a goal in the outdrive, um, like an oval shape, then I'll, that's when I'll actually replace it. I typically go, for me personally, uh, for all the running that I do, um, I, t I like to go event to event with a new, out new diff and outdrives, and especially the bones. You want to definitely keep them as a pair. Um, but for you guys that are on more of a, a racing budget plan, um, which is totally fine, uh, I definitely wouldn't change them unless you saw some sort of um, indention in the outdrive. Um, I know that the bones and outdrives can get kind of pricey, but luckily with the associated quality, we the stuff lasts for quite a while. Um, for me, I just like to keep the diff super fresh. That just helps with um, keeping it the you know the top of the level of um, racing that we do. Um, but like I said, I think you're pretty much all set for what I showed you guys. Hopefully you guys learned and picked up some tips that I did. Um, like I said earlier, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, watching the, the channel. Um, I got a lot of stuff coming soon and planned. Um, and hopefully, I got, hopefully I'll see you guys at the track. If you guys have any questions, feel free to come up to me or message me on Facebook or Instagram or through YouTube. Um, definitely always a pleasure helping you guys out. Um, but until then, we'll see you next time. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and we'll see you next time.